Why'd you bring the Buster here? The Buster brought me back. Welcome back to Boxer Baddies, guys. My name's Ethan, and this is Drew. He's the one that has um, been pro-tuning Stella, and we are here at Nerd Performance. And basically, guys, we are bringing you a video that is going to dispel all the myths and all the rumors that are out there about the Type RA engine. We have opened up a Type RA block that has about 12,000 miles on it, and we are going to show you the reinforced pistons that Subaru claims to um, have in this block. So, Drew, I just wanted to ask you a couple questions um, about these pistons that we have here in front of us. Um, so this here is a piston from the 2008 Subaru EJ, correct? Yes. And then this piston is from our um, 2019 Type RA block uh, STI. So one thing that I noticed right off the bat is I do see some form of reinforcement and it has to do with the area here and if you notice you can see a difference in the thickness here and there so maybe you can tell us a little bit about that yeah I do agree with you um, in that fashion the, the piston has been reinforced uh, you know these uh, struts that basically go up the side here they give you a little bit stronger uh, support for the skirt so the piston uh, rocking in the cylinder doesn't damage the sleeve of the skirt um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice upgrade. They also, um, you can see from a side profile, they kind of uh, added some material right here underneath the wrist pin. And so that helps on heavy D cell where, um, you know, the, the rod is pulling the piston down and there's a little bit extra material to keep from pin deflection inside the piston. So that's a good upgrade. Awesome. Okay, so in that, in that way, the RA piston is better and it is reinforced. Um, but the big question that everyone wants to know is, Am I going to have ringland failure? Is is my piston head going to blow when I push more power? Well, you know, that was why I was so anxious to pull a piston out of your uh, block last night. And that was because I really wanted to see what this ring gap was. And, um, you know, there are characteristics of the piston that can prevent um, the problem from happening. But this, these two pistons are designed very similar to each other. And specifically regarding the piston design, what could help the situation is the distance of the combustion, which would be the top of the piston, uh, versus the piston ring itself. So basically from the top of the ring to the top of the piston, the greater that this distance is, the less heat will make it to the ring, and the less the ring will expand, thus and that makes it, raises the power uh, level of the car or uh, foundation of the car. So, so if you, go well, ahead. Yeah, when you, when you talk about the, this gap that we have here, or the space, do you mind showing us on one of these um, basically upgraded pistons that you can buy what it would look like to have a bigger yeah a bigger space absolutely. and so okay so what we have here is this is um, a little bit dated part but it's a CP piston uh, from about manufactured about five years ago um, we took out of an engine that had rod knot you know so it's had its miles on it I think this engine had around 50,000 maybe before it, it started knocking um, and if you compare that to the RA piston you'll notice that they're pretty much a mirror image um, so, you know, CP follows Subaru's design very closely. Um, they definitely beef the piston up. It has substantially more support for the pistons, the, I'm sorry, the wrist pins and the skirts all the way around. It's, it's really, it's a really tank piston. Um, so comparing these to another piston, which this is the piston that we're going to put into Ethan's car, there's a pretty sizable difference. Um, between the distance on these two and you can see them kind of stacked right on top of each other. It's about a 25% increase. So that means that the flame front is going to have a longer distance to travel before uh, you can heat up, heat up the piston ring in general. So that's a, a good upgrade by Manly. Well, job well done guys. Awesome. Okay, so has that changed from the 08 Subaru, the, the, the one that we have here. So basically the Subaru piston that we've had all these years, has that amount of space changed in the RA piston? No, it would appear they have kept their original ring line design. Okay, so basically that means we still run the same risk of ring line failure. Yep, so what we need to do from this point is uh, show the ring gap that the car came with. So we still have the ring off the number one piston, they're out in the shop over here. So in a few moments we'll go and uh, compare them to um, 
see the difference between the old rings and the new rings, and you're going to be shocked when you see this. Okay, so basically we have two factors that play into ringland failure. It's the space that we have from the top of the piston, the flame front, to when it reaches its first ring. Yes. Okay, and then the other factor would be the ring itself, the gap in between the, the ring. That is right. Okay. And so just to kind of clarify things, you know, that the reason these failures occur frequently is because there's just too much heat in the cylinder. And so if you have a particular tuner that understands the dynamic of what's happening inside here, um, you can tune around the flaw of the engine and, and safely make a lot of horsepower. But because the clearance is so tight and the, the system is not optimal from the factory, um, you're walking a fine line. Uh, a bad tank of gas could, could result in a failure, and that's actually what happens on the street. Gotcha. Okay, so why don't we take them back and we'll show them what you're talking about with the ring gap, which is another factor that really has to do with these ringland failures uh, and blowing up in, in the engine. So now we are back in the shop and Drew here is going to show us about that second factor we were talking about that contributes to uh, ringland failure and that is the actual ring gap. Yep. Okay, so what we're going to do is just do a quick, uh, you know, a quick excerpt. We're going to take this ring off here and we're going to illustrate what a ring gap is and how to measure it and then how it varies from build to build and why it negatively impacts or positively impacts what you got going on. So this is Ethan's uh, original piston. This is his original ring for his block. We're gonna put it right back in the hole it was in right now. So this is how it works. Did you insert the piston ring on the top of the piston? Just like this. You get it just barely started in there. And you wanna keep it kind of toward the top of the bore. And then you'll kind of notice there's a little gap. And this is what we're gonna be measuring right there. Uh, so we're going to take the piston and make sure that the ring is completely squared to the top so that um, the ring gap measurement is consistent. So now I've just put the piston in there and I push the ring down and it levels the ring out and so now when we measure the gap it'll be accurate. So this is called a feeler gauge. Basically this tool has a, you can see we've had this one for a while, it has just a bunch of little steels on it. Each one of them is stamped with a number and it represents the thickness of the plate. So we're just basically going to find out which one fits and that's going to be the measurement of the ring gap. Alright, so uh, that one was seven. I won't fit in there. The next one up is eight. That's a thousandth of an inch. Okay, so the 10 is feeling kind of snug, so we're probably going to hit the stop on 11 here. Okay, so the 11, it fits a little bit, but if I try to force it, it changes the rings a little bit, so we're going to call that 11 thousandths gap. And so this is an unmodified gap, exactly how Subaru intended it, right out of the box. Okay, so next what we're going to do, now that we've established what the factory ring gap is, we're going to see what Manly recommends for their ring gap and their piston setup. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to just take the instructions that were included in the box and um, you know multiply those values out. It's basically a formula. So if you look right here, the formula is listed on here. And uh, basically how it works is the ring gap is a function of your overall bore size. And then there's times a modifier value. So you see 5, 6, 6.5, six 7. And basically that equates to the aggression level of your build. You have a, a small boost, medium boost, big boost, huge boost. And so you want your gap to be bigger proportionately to the intention of what you're doing. So um, let's plug in some numbers here real quick. Uh, thousandths, that means that we're measuring in standard units and I know our stock bore size is measured in millimeters so that is 99.5 and then we're going to divide that by 25.4 and that will convert millimeters into inches. Oops, wrong way. Okay, so this is the bore size in inches, 3.917 inches, and then we're going to multiply that times our... How high are we going, Ethan? On the boost? Yeah. What do you think? 40 30. pounds? 30? 
I said we turned our boost down to 30. So <laughs> we'll uh, we'll give a conservative measurement for the sake of the video, and we'll say we're doing a medium boost between 16 and 25 pounds, and that's a realistic number. So we're gonna put in six thousandths in this multiplier. So times 0 0.006. Hit the enter button, and this is the number you're left with right here. So that is 23 and a half thousandths. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, measurement that we got on the factory, 11 thousandths, subtract that from the 23. And you will see you're left over with 12 and a half thousandths. So the recommended uh, gap for a boosted car at 15 pounds of boost from Manly is 12 and a half thousandths larger than what factory equipped the vehicle with from the factory. Okay, so now that we have reviewed both factors, including the gap between the flame side of the piston and when it sees its first ring and the gap between the piston ring when it is seated here in the cylinder, can we say that the Type RA Subaru design is superior than its predecessor and can it hold more power than its predecessor? Well, uh, the short answer to that question is no, it can't. And the long answer is basically why it can. And uh, Subaru did in fact reinforce the piston. The piston is stronger. It will hold more power if you are looking at the, the piston in an isolated form. However, uh, that upgrade did not attack the original problem that was the problem for all of the blocks previous to this one and this one included. So basically what's happening here is if the ring gets too hot, uh, the ring gap closes and it causes the piston failure. So when the ring gets hot, the ring expands and because it's contained in the bore, it has nowhere to go. This little gap here shrinks up and then when the gap touches and continues to grow after that, uh, the ring starts to wave and that's what cracks the ring lands inside the piston. So if you simply prevent the gap from touching itself, that will never occur and your ring lands will be happier for the life of your engine. So there it is. So the answer to the question, is the Type RA any better at preventing the infamous ringland failure? The answer is no. So for all of you out there that were wondering this very question, we have finally busted the myths and rumors for you right here with Drew, breaking down the science behind absolutely everything behind ringland failure. And now you know for yourself what you can and can't do in your Type RA engine. Yeah. All right, guys, so really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, my name's Ethan from Boxer Baddies, and that was Drew, and we're here at NER Performance. And right now, if you haven't been up to date with what's going on, this is Stella right here. She's going to be built with those forged manly pistons, and she's gonna be holding some really good power. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, check out Instagram, Boxer Baddies, and hope you have a great day. Take it easy.